Uh, best documentary feature film, 20 Days in Maripol. Misha Lof Chernoff, Michelle Misner, Rainy Aronson Rath. Number 105 with 284 on deck. Congratulations over here on your right, sir. Congratulations. Uh, I was over there when the war began. I've been following as much of the world has. I'm wondering, did you want to send a message to the American people, to the American lawmakers about funding for uh, military aid for Ukraine? I just want to remind that yesterday was an anniversary of an attack on the maternity hospital in Mariupol. It's a significant moment, it's a symbolic moment, and that moment became a symbol of the invasion of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the symbol of war crimes that they did there. Uh, right now, unfortunately, Ukraine and topic of supporting Ukraine became a bargaining chip for a lot of politicians in the world. Uh, and we should just, and I hope I remind everyone with, with our film that this is a humanitarian catastrophe uh, and this is not a political question. This is a, a humanitarian emergency, a, uh, a matter of supporting the civilians that are being attacked and being killed. It's, it's not my job to try to convince anyone of anything. Our job is to provide as much context and information as possible and I hope that decisions will be made, but according to this information that we are given. Number 284 with 273 on deck. Hi. In the back of the room for two. Carlos Aguilar, Roger, you were that uh, Congratulations. I wonder what, what has been going through your mind during this war season uh, up until this moment, you know, with what's happening, not only in Ukraine, but in other parts of the world, the ongoing conflicts. I'm sure that's a jarring experience. It is been two years since, almost two years since Mariupol was occupied and all these two years it was never past for us. It was always, every day we thought of people of Mariupol and other cities that were occupied after that. And there were many, there were was Bakhmut, Marinka, Avdiivka, recently Solidar, Popasna, countless villages. So Mariupol for us never represented just Mariupol. It represented all of those cities that had been destroyed. And every step of this journey, we kept reminding, and we had an honor to be talking about Ukraine and about those cities that had been occupied, and an honor to be reminding the world about the importance of thinking of how to stop this invasion. So, it's, yeah, it's been a privilege, but it's been a strange, painful experience at the same time because I'm standing here, my heart is in Ukraine. My heart with all the people who are now suffering and losing their lives and losing their homes and fighting for their land. Those who are in the jails, uh, just locked. And I don't know how can I fix it. And I know whether we should try, but I hope that this win will just elevate this story to more people. And they will just see us and will hear Ukrainians. Number 273. Hi, over here. Left. Yeah. And Allison Foreman from IndieWire, congratulations. Thank you. Um, you said during your speech, this is the first Oscar for Ukraine. Why does this movie feel like the right film to win that award and make that history? Uh, 20 Days in Mariupol were also nominated uh, as a, in an international film category by Ukraine. And I feel uh, honored. And, it's, and it's, I think it's quite appropriate that uh, for the country that is right now at war, uh, the cinema that represents, its, that represents it is a documentary film. There will be a time when great films will come out of Ukraine, of great artists that are now working or actually fighting. A lot of filmmakers in Ukraine are right now in the trenches fighting for their country. So they cannot make movies, they cannot process yet 
what is happening to our history, to what is happening to our people. So right now, documentary is representing Ukraine, but the time will come when more Ukrainian filmmakers come, and I hope they will be inspired by our experience, by our work, and they will tell more stories. And Final question, number 241, in the back of the room. Two forty one. Hold your number up. Hold your number up. If you're two forty one, hold your up your number. Hi, Katzi Stefan hey. with Variety here. Uh, tonight you made a powerful speech and you called on the A-listers in the room to also use their voices so that the truth can prevail. What do you think the Hollywood members who are here tonight could do to use their platforms to help Ukraine? See, this year, this year in a documentary category, there are amazing films. They represent so much, so many important topics, different continents, different voices. Uh, and my fellow documentary filmmakers did an amazing job to, to lift up documentary genre and documentary voices to to highest level possible. But it, as well, so many important topics have been touched by, by scripted films, by great directors uh, of, the, of the century. Or, uh, so, as I said, the history is not always how it happened, it's how we remember. And the future generations will look back and what was happening to us right now, and they will see through the lens of cinema, whether it's documentary or scripted. So this is, this is a quite, quite hard task to, uh, to, to do. It's a big responsibility for all the filmmakers, but everyone is doing a great job. I, and uh, not only those filmmakers who make serious cinema about problems of the world, also those who entertain. Because children in Ukraine, uh, adults, civilians, everyone, when they're fighting, when they're hiding, in basements, when bombs fall, they watch cinema. They escape in a different world, so there they stay sane and they can survive through this horrifying events. So even even light-hearted films help humanity to get through probably the hardest time in in, in many many years. Congratulations! Thank you, Thank you very much.